These are the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of integrating piecewise functions. So, let's look at a real world example here. So, the bicycle tire that is inflated to 80 psi, which stands for pounds per square inch, is punctured by a thorn at time zero. The rate that the air pressure in the tire decreased decreases by is modeled by P of T, measured in PSI per minute, where P is given by the piecewise defined function. Right? So notice rate, remember, or rate or rate of change, that's just another word for the derivative. And you can see that it's a derivative also by the units. If it's ever some unit, in this case PSI per something, it indicates that it's a rate, in this case it's per minute. So notice this part of the function applies from 0 to 4, and then this one applies from 4 to 11, second piece. So it says find the air pressure in the bicycle tire at time 11. So what we have is not a function for the air pressure, it's for the rate of change of that air pressure that decreases by. It's another important thing that is decreasing by this rate. So if we want to find the air pressure in the bicycle tire at 11 minutes, okay, well, we don't really have a name for what the original function is, so since it's air pressure, I'll just refer to it as capital A, but really you can use whatever letter you want other than lowercase p there. So we're looking for the air pressure at 11 minutes. So the way we can set this up is, since we have an initial air pressure, which in this case is 80 psi, And then normally it'd be plus the change if you were given just the rate of change. But this rate's a little bit different. It says the rate that the air pressure in the tire decreases by. So this represents the rate it's decreasing by. So rather than plus, because of that wording right there, it's actually going to be minus. Because this is going to tell you how much it decreases by. So the change here, it still comes from the definite interval. In this case, the lower limit would be when the initial one is, which in this case, the initial is at time zero. So from time zero to the time we're looking for, 11. And what goes here is our derivative of this function, which in this case is the root of the rate of the air pressure decreasing by as P of T. So P of T, P of T. So that would be our initial setup here. However, this is the first time we've run into where the uh, rate of change or derivative is a piecewise function. So if we notice from a 0 to 11, that covers both of these pieces. If it was just 0 to 4, or 0 to 2, or 0 to 3, we would only have to use the top piece. If here at 0 to 11, we have to use both. So we can set this up 80 minus, and then what we can do here is we'll need to split it up because there's two different pieces. So the way we split it is based on where the domain of each piece applies. So the first one applies from 0 to 4, and that piece is 4 squared of t. Notice I put front zero on the thing because we're subtracting the whole thing, but when you split it up, it's plus a bit of Integral from this one is from 4 to 11, and we went all the way to 11. So from 4 to 11, of the other part of t of t that this one applies on is 4. cubed of 1 minus 2. And then close parentheses around it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start simplifying each of these. You know, keep writing the A minus, so I don't forget to do that, to include the initial. And this one, we can pull out the constant of 4, integral from 0 to 4. And then we can rewrite this instead of square root of t as t to the one half power. In fraction and rational exponent form. And you can see this one's all set up to integrate. So before, when you integrate t to the one half, you get t to the three halves times two thirds. Evaluated from zero to four. And then you can pull out the two thirds. Just rewrite this a minus here. 
We'll work on the other as well. I'll just after that, but by the way, this one. All right, easy to so do one at a time here. So it'd be 80 minus. And we can pull out the 2 thirds times the 4 gives you 8 thirds on the outside. And then if we rewrite this, and instead of t to the 3 halves, that's the same as the radical form of the square root of t cubed. Okay, so that one, we're just about all set to just substitute in and, uh, and evaluate it. So let's work on the other one. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because notice we've got a function inside. We can't just integrate like this because it's not just the cube root of t. So that's where you'd have to use u substitution on this one. So we'd set u equal to what the function inside here is 12 minus t. But it's a pretty simple u substitution because the derivative u dt, derivative 12 is 0, derivative of negative t is just negative 1. So when you solve that dt, or just multiply or divide by negative 1, just ends up being with negative d. But remember, with a definite integral, when you use u substitution, you also you need the whole integral in terms of u, so you also need to convert the lower and upper limits. That's a pretty simple one. To convert there. So we've got plus, and if you plug in 11, you can see 12 minus 11 will give you 1. So when t is 11, u is 1. That's our new upper limit. And when you substitute in 4, 12 minus 4 is 8. So that becomes our new lower limit. When t is 4, u is 8. And then we still have this 4 here. We can now rewrite this as the cube root of u. And we just figured out dt is negative d. And then what we can do is pull out the negative along with the 4 here. Or actually, in this case, notice the lower and upper limits are in the wrong order. So the lower the one should be here and the 8 should be here. So we can flip those and that would change the sign. So rather than negative, I would switch it to positive 1. And then it would become integral from 1 to 8 rather than 8 to 1. And we can rewrite this as u to the 1 third u. Now we're all set to integrate that one. So the 4 would stay on the outside. We integrate u to the 1 third. You get u to the 4 thirds times 3 fourths. That was 1 to 8. I can just turn that bracket into, sorry, that line into a bracket there. And this one, if you pull out the 3 fours, notice the fours are going to cancel. So we'll just have plus 3 on the outside. And then if we switch that to radical form, rather than u to the 4 thirds, that's the same as the cube root of u to the 4th. right up here. So we still have the initial amount was 80, and then minus in parentheses. Now we can start to work this one out. Well, you got 8 thirds, the constant out in front, and then we can plug those in. So we've substituted 4, that's the square root of 4 is 2, cubed is 8, minus, we plug in, substitute 0, square root of 0 is 0, cubed is 0. And then plus our other constant 3. And then if we substitute in our upper limit of 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, to the fourth is 16 minus. We substitute in the lower limit of 1, the cube root of 1 is 1, the fourth is 1. A minus, and let's just start simple by this. That's going to be 8 times 8 thirds, that's 64 thirds. Plus, that's 50, 16 minus 1 is 15, times 3 is 45. So we can 
convert these all to thirds here. So you get 80 is the same as 240 thirds. Minus 64 thirds. Plus 45, if you multiply that by 3, let's see, 40 times 3 is 120. 5 times 3 is 15. 120 plus 15 is 135. So we've got 240 thirds. That was our initial air pressure in the tire. And we just figured out it decreased by, we add those up, that's 9. Nine and one hundred ninety-nine over three. So two forty minus one ninety-nine gives you forty-one over three. And then on these applied problems, don't forget to put the units. The units for P of T are psi per minute, but when you integrate that, that'll be back to psi, and that was the units for the initial one also. So now we're down to forty-one over three pounds per square inch psi. Okay, now let's take a look at the same function, a couple other things, part B and part C here. Part B says write, but do not evaluate, okay, so we're just going to have to set this one up, an expression involving one or more intervals that represents the average, okay, so it's a keyword average, rate at which air is decreasing. And the tire between times t equals 1 and t equals 1. So, just like you do for any other you find the average of a function over some interval, the first thing you have is 1 over, in this case, b minus a is 11 minus 1. And then you have the integral from 1 to 11 of whatever you're finding the average of. In this case, we're finding the average rate at which error is decreasing, and that, now this was represented by p of t, right? That's the rate that the air pressure in the tire decreases by. So p of t. But again, since p of t is a piecewise function, we got one tenth, and that's going to be multiplied by this whole thing. We split it up because that one to eleven again involves two intervals. We're going to have to split it. Okay. But notice we're not going to start at zero here because, unlike our initial one, which is at zero, this one's starting at time one. But from one to eleven, that still involves both. So the first piece we're going to use from one to four, and then the second piece from four to eleven. So this interval would be from 1 to 4, and that function was 4 squared t dt, plus, that one would be from 4 to 11, and that piece was 4 times the cube root of 12 minus t. And since it just says write but do not evaluate, that's all you have to do. Now we actually already integrated this part, of, uh, part A, so we know what that is, but this one a little bit different because the lower limit's one. So you could figure it out, but they're just asking you to set this up, and that's what we just did. So if you did work it out, that would give you the average of rate that it's air pressure is decreasing from the tire between one and one of the and the units on it, if you did work it out, would be PSI per minute. Remember the average formula preserves the units of what you're trying to have. And the last one, we want an expression for B of T. So over here, we called it A, but here they're calling it B of T. So they're giving us some specific name that represents the air pressure of the bicycle tire at time T as a piecewise defined function. So it's kind of like our initial plus change one here, except this was just for 11 minutes, right? Now we want to be able to use this function for any time, not just time 11. So we're going to have two pieces here, because we've got two pieces of our piecewise function. Let's start with B of T equals. Now the thing that they have in common is they both have 
the initial amount was 80. So when we split this one up, that's the part they both have, 80. But then it's going to be a little bit, let's start with the first interval, a little bit easier. So on this one, the plus, or actually minus, because it's decreasing by it. So minus, because it's given the rate of decreasing it. Integral from, well, if you're using the first piece, it's starting at time zero, right? That's our initial one. But here, we want to be able to use this for, we don't want to put four there, because that would only apply right at four. We don't want to be, use, be able to use this for any time, like one, two, three, any time greater than zero, but uh, four, less than or equal to four. So what you do is you make your upper limit T. So that way, if you want to plug in three, three would become your upper limit, two, two would become your upper limit, and so on. And then we'll put the appropriate piece of that, which is four squared T. And this piece applies for the same interval if t is between 0 and 4. That means so. That part's fairly straightforward. The second part's a little bit trickier because the temptation is to just use the other piece and go from 0 to Oops, I just made one mistake here. I forgot. Um, I can show you guys why uh, this is not going to work here. The trouble is I actually left the T in there. Okay? The trouble with that is if I plugged in 2, for instance, that would mean I have to plug in 2 for T there as well, which would just make it a constant and it would change the interval completely. So what we have to do is just change the variable there. And really you can choose whatever letter you want. Typically what's used is like X or something like that. So four squared of x dx. That way, now when, this, when you plug in two for t, since this is x, it's no longer get plugged in for that. It preserves the function. Same function, just different variable. But this one would be t because it applies when t is between zero and four. Then the other one would be minus. Now, if we're past time four, that means we've already used the first piece on the first four minutes. So we, here we would have just 0 to 4. Uh, again, change the variable in x so we don't plug it in there. 4 root x. Yeah. Now you can either put parentheses here and then a plus here, or it's probably easier just to distribute the thing. And then the other integral, since we know we're past time 4, the lower limit is here, you only start using this one at time 4. Doesn't start, you don't start using it at time zero. So from four, and that's where you put the T. That way, if you're at time five, you can go just as we know, four or five, times six, four or six, and so on. And then again, we want to change the variable so we don't plug it in. So instead of uh, T, we'll use X. So four cube root of 12 minus X. The X. And then again, you put what, what interval it applies on. This applies for what? T is between four and what's it, 11? Yeah. Actually, it didn't have the equal to, so. Actually, I don't know why it didn't. It should have had the equal to. So that's the type of that should be a simple center. Probably we can actually use it for. Time alone. Okay, so there's our piecewise function. So now, if time is between 0 and 4, we just plug that time in here. And now it can't tell us how much it increases by. If time is greater than 4, like 11, we, this one would just be a total from 0 to 4. And then from 4 to the end of that time is in the second piece. Okay, let's take a look at one more real world example. It's a little bit different. This one says at 6 a.m., which in this case they're calling time zero, a water heater contains a thousand gallons of water. So you can see that's giving you your initial amount of water in the water heater. The rate of change of the water in the water heater, W of T, in gallons per hour, again, rate of change is just another word for derivative, and the units give that away also because it's gallons per hour, what this person did. 
or t is measured in hours after 6 a.m. is modeled by this function. So this time we've got three pieces. And we want to know how much water is in the water heater at 8 a.m. So if we look at part C here, it looks like they're going to call the original function h of t. So this way, so we don't have to change it. I'll call it h of t. But we're trying to find h of 8. That's what we're looking for. Let's have a little more room here. So h of 8 equals the initial amount given is there's 100 gallons of water. So you have to set up initial plus change. But notice the difference here, this one doesn't say this is the rate it's decreased by. It's just the rate of change. So if that's the case, then you just set it up like normal with a plus sign. You only make it a minus if it specifically says it's the rate it's decreasing. It. So here it might be negative, but that negative will already be part of what you get there. So the change here would be the integral from times 0 is 6 a.m. And notice it says t is measured in hours after 6 a.m. So 8 a.m., that's two hours after 6, right? So that corresponds to time 2. So I accidentally made a mistake here. Sorry about that. I carelessly put the 8 in there. Really, 8 a.m. is not time 8. That would be 8 hours after 6 a.m. It's actually time 2 is what we're looking at. And that means the upper limit there. Is two of whatever the derivative of the amount of water in the uh, water heater, which in this case is given by WT. So WT. <laughs> so we got we have the initial here, hundred plus. Now look at our interval, zero to two. Even though this has three pieces. Notice 0 to 2 doesn't use this last piece at all, so we won't have to worry about that on this one. So we can just set it up, split it up from, the first one applies from 0 to 1, so from 0 to 1, and that one's negative 10. Oops. Sine of pi t, t, plus integral from 1 to 2, since we're stopping at 2 there, uh, this piece is 4t minus 4. So, in order to, oops, in order to integrate this one, first what we can do is take out got a function inside of pi t, so this one's going to require u substitution. So over here, pretty simple, u equals pi t. So then we convert our lower and upper limits. So when t is 1, if you plug in 1 there, you can see u would be pi, becomes our new upper limit. And when t is 0, if you substitute in t, 0 for t, 0 times pi is still 0, so the lower limit stays 0. And then we could write this as the sine of u. And then to get rid of the dt, if we take the derivative here, u dt is just pi. So that means dt, we we'll multiply dt and divide by pi, you get dt equals du over pi. <coughs> so what we can do there is put the du there. And the over pi, that's a constant. So you can just pull that. So let's go ahead and finish integrating this, then we'll tackle the over here. So minus 10 over pi, and when you integrate sine, you 
get negative cosine. Right? Starts with a C with uh, your, for your answer. And so this negative, that's going to change that to be plus up there. Evaluated from 0 to 5. So now this one's all set to just plug in here. And let's get the other one to the same point. So on this one, you could factor out a 4, but I'm just going to leave it there. Either way, it's fine. Um, so if you just integrate it like that, you get 4t squared over 2 minus 4t. Notice this one, you can just integrate for example, you don't need to use your substitution. I waited from 1 to 2. Reduce it a little bit. Okay, one before we plug in, so that reduces it to be 2t squared minus 4t. Okay. So now it's just a matter of substituting and evaluating these different because we already integrated them. So we have plus now, which is 10 over pi. That's the cosine of pi minus the cosine of zero plus the plug in two, two squared is four times two gives you eight minus four times two, eight. It's the upper limit minus what you get when you plug in a lower limit. If you plug in one, you get one squared is one times two is two minus four times one. I'll just move this up here and run over there to uh, finish simplify it. So we've got 100. It's our initial um, amount of water in the uh, water heater. And then we've got plus 10 over pi. And then cosine of pi. Pi is over here. Circle cosine of the x coordinate, so cosine of pi is negative one minus cosine of zero. Well, zero is right here on the circle. Cosine again of the x coordinate, so one. And notice the eights cancel out here, so you just get minus two minus negative four, negative two. So that becomes plus two. The end that to the under, you get 100. And that's negative 2 times 10 over 5. It's negative 20 over 5. Sorry, not 100, 102. I meant to add a 2 to that. And the units here, again, would stay the same as the units in this case. Remember, W of T was gallons per hour, but we integrated it, so that gives you back gallons. And that's what the initial amount was, so this is gallons. Okay, now let's take a look at the same uh, problem here, but parts B and C. This one again says write but do not evaluate. In the expression involving one or more intervals, it represents the average, the keyword there, rate of change of the water in the water heater. From 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So again, if remember 6 a.m. it said it was time zero. And that means 10 a.m. would be four hours after that to time four. So we're finding the average on that interval. So you'd always again start off with one over b minus a, which in this case is four minus zero, times the integral from zero to four. Of what we're finding the average of is the rate of change of the water in the water heater, which they call capital W. But again, since this is a piecewise function, one fourth, and then we'll, this time from zero to four, notice we're going to have to use all three pieces. So we split it from zero to one, the first piece applies, and that was 
negative 10 sine of pi t. Plus the next piece applied from 1 to 2. And that was 4t minus 4. Plus the last piece applies from 2 to 4, and that's 16 over t squared. Again, since I just said to set this one up, that's all we have to do. Actually, it wouldn't be again that hard to evaluate it because we've already integrated these two. The only one we have to do is this last one. You can do that by writing it as 16 to the negative 2. And then the last one, part C, again says write an expression for h of t. The amount of water in the water heater at time t is a piecewise defined function. So this time, since there's three pieces to the rate, w of t, H of t is going to need three pieces also. So they all need to start out with the initial, which was 100. Plus the change on the first one. Since it's starting, first piece starts at times 0 be 0. This one we can use from 0 to 1. Um, but we want to call that t for that piece. So that way it's like a half or something like that. We plug that into that piece, and that would just be negative 10 sine of pi. No, sine of pi. Over here we have to change the variable to x, the x, because uh, we don't want to be plugging the 1 half. We don't want to plug it in right there. So that needs to be a different variable. And this applies for oops, 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1. Notice the equal sign can be on either one. So it doesn't matter if we put it here or here, because that's kind of our stopping point. And then plus on the other one. This one, if you're past time 1, but you're between 1 and 2, this one would be from one, 0 to 1. Negative 10 sine pi x dx. Plus the integral from 1 to t. Uh, the middle piece was 4t minus 4. Dt. And this one applies. 41t is between 1 and 2. Oops, I accidentally left the t there. Gotta be careful about that. So again, this can't be t, it's gotta be x. So 4x minus 4 dx. So. so that we don't plug that value in for x there. Plus, on the last one that changed, again, here we, if we're past time 2, we've already used the first two completely. So right here, so it'd be from 0 to 1, negative 10, sine of pi x, dx. Plus, this one we've used if we're past time 2, from 1 to 2, 4x minus 4 dx. Plus, integral from 2 is where this one starts, to t, and this one was 16 over t squared. Again, don't forget to change it, though, to x, so 16 over x squared dx, so that way we don't plug in the t value in there. And then this applies from 2 to 4, so 4. 2 is less than, it's very good equal to there. t is less than equal to 4. So there's our piecewise function that gives us an expression for the amount of water in the water at any time. And that concludes the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of integrated piecewise functions.